Oh, I've gotten like three or four today off a drop shot. Here we go. There we go. What's up, YouTube? Before I start, I just want to thank people who are watching my videos and clicking that like button. A couple of you are, looks like are watching it regular. Really appreciate that. It's really awesome. Helped my channel grow. Uh, so thank you so much. And if you're watching my videos and you like them, if you could hit that like button or the share it or make a comment, uh, that'd be like the world to me. It would really mean a lot to me. Uh, so I appreciate it. And if there's any products that I use, I try to put a product link in the description box where you can go, usually it's on Amazon, you can go, but sometimes it's other sites. You can go and you can look at that product a little more, maybe get some other reviews, or if you wanna buy it, you can buy it. So always check that description box. Um, but today, I'm in Maine, I'm going to Square Pond once again, my favorite lake. And uh, last week, you know, it's interesting. It's today, it's like the 23rd, I think, of September. And it's gonna be a no wind, straight sunshine with, uh, a high of 89 degrees in Maine. So it's just crazy. Um, so the weather this year has just been insane. But last week I saw a lot of, you know, probably at least at least seven or eight large mouth, probably all around five pounds up in the shallows. But they just won't commit to anything. I threw every lure from a 10 inch lure to a, to a quarter inch lure, uh, you know, they're just, and if they are, like they were, hit, they would bite my Sanko, but they nibble on the very end of it. So they're just not committing. And you know, it's kind of been that way all year uh, with the largemouth. Um, it's just been a really tough year. We had a crazy spawn. The spawn was so late. I was catching smallmouth off beds on, on July 1st. So it, it was just, you know, it's kind of crazy. But, anyways, um, so I don't know what's going to happen. I think that water temperature is still going to be above 72, 73 degrees. So I don't know if they're going to commit. But I've got my drop shot ready. Uh, I'll go fish in that 20, 30 foot range um, if they're not gonna be biting shallow. So what I do is I throw my, um, I have a Spro BBZ1 Rat, which is amazing. I have a big one and a small one. And if they don't hit the, that, in the, in, if the large belt don't hit that, or they don't hit my four inch Sankos, you know, I just, you know, I, I kind of give up on the shallows. And I just, I go out deep, I start drop shotting, trying to find them on my graph and, uh, and, and drop shot. So that's, I, I don't know, we'll see. If, if they're biting shallow, if they're biting shallow, it's gonna be awesome because they're there. But if they're not, you know, I'm just gonna go out deep again. So uh, thanks for watching. And uh, let's see if we can catch some fish today. Uh, well, I, uh, I wasn't rolling. But I caught a bass. I'll explain. I'm just using that BBZ concept, looking for points and contours and break lines. But this is a good size smallmouth right here. So make sure he gets good shots. Lately, I haven't been getting good shots. It's pretty good smallmouth. I'll explain what happened in a second. Put him down. That's a six-inch robo worm. I'm not sure what color it is. It's got some green, like some chartreuse and white. I like using white uh, when I'm in 20 or 30 feet. And then I got a half ounce, pretty heavy. I'm sort of pushing the envelope on an eight pound liter. This is Lou's speed line. Uh, but here, let me let me show you what I did. I, uh, I basically, as far as pros go, I studied two pros. I studied Bill Siemental, and he's got a, his Spro BBZ line. And he's a, he's a Spro Pro. And, uh, and then I also studied Carl Kalanka. Carl Kalanka, you know, mostly, you know, in regards to onshore fishing and pitching and flipping and things like that. But offshore, I'm, I'm thinking, uh, I'm thinking Bill Siemental. I'll link up his page. There'll be a link for those lures too. He recommends those lures, but I want to show you what happened. So if you look at the left, I'm right here. I caught that fish right here on this point. You can see those contours. They, they go out to a point, okay, right there. So I was up on that contour and I was up higher, fishing out into deeper water, bringing that lure uphill. So, and look, you can see the grass here where we are, but I was actually more over here. Sorry for shaking the, uh, 
But you can see the grass and the water. So when you got grass like that, vegetation on a point with a sharp drop off, you have to fish those. And uh, when there's no wind, drop shotting is a really good technique. But that's Bill Siemental, you know, that's all him looking for those points, those contours, those deep drop offs. Um, you know, you, you start studying him, you're going to start putting some fish in the boat and uh, he's got some great lures. But uh, can help you expedite that process. Um, but anyways, I think I'm going to keep fishing this this little contour right here, this little break point. I'll get up nice and close so you can see. Uh, it's a beautiful point that drops off into deeper water. It's real warm today. Top of the water, 73 degrees. So I'm not seeing them shallow. So I'm just fishing deep. That was a good size smallmouth. Uh, Am I in your way? Okay, just let me know I can move easily. Really? What, what are you fishing for? Yeah? You got a drop shot? Uh, oh! I've gotten like three or four today off a drop shot. Here we go. There we go. Right on, you got a graph? Hold on one sec. Gotta give this guy some line, man. Oh, this is a good one. They're all at like 20 to 30 feet. Right, right at the break line, right where the shore starts. Right out here, like, like 100 yards from the shore. At, just go all, you can go all the way up and down, man. Been doing it all day today. <sighs> yeah, baby. That felt good. That's a beauty. Small mouth. That was gorgeous. That was a lot of fun. So, bye babe. That was awesome, man. If you look at this, this, this is classic BBZ. You see this point right here, these contours. This is deep water, this is shallow. This is right here. It's right there. So I was out here right on the edge. I mean, right on the edge casting out into deeper water, bringing it up. And that's classic Bill Siemental, BBZ. There's, there's a bunch of grass in there, there were rocks, and it's a point. It's a point that bass can sit on the ambush on and they can hide in those contours and they can dive down to depths to escape and stay cool and get more oxygen. But I was just basically just cast, you know, pitching basically my drop shot into shallow water and bringing it uphill and I just caught that. That was a pretty big smallmouth actually. I'm pretty happy with that. So, and that's the, you know, off the BBZ theory application. That's I think my third, third or fourth bass today. And this is a tough day, you know, so. All right, I gotta get some food and pats are on in a second here. Here we go. Got him. Little guy. Oh, she's not that little. All right, all right, all right.
You ready? You ready? You're ready. Whoa! It's the same formula. Explain that. Not a huge one, but I think anybody would be happy to have that bass. You're gorgeous. Bye, bud. It's the same formula. I got, I'm on the slope, I'm in 17 feet of water. It's going uphill. I'm casting, uh, actually right here you can even see the grass. But I'm casting, I'm a little further up and I'm casting out, bringing the lure uphill. And this is great, because we got our depth. We have, you can see it drop off. Okay. You can see this the point and the contours drop off right and then right here I don't know how well you can see this sorry but right around that 10 foot we're up mark we got a bunch of grass and that grass is about 10 feet deep and they're not really in the grass right now at least I don't think I haven't spent a lot of time pitching that grass I'm not going to um, but they're on the outside edge in the on the breakpoint and that's all bill seen and tall right there it's all bill seen and tall bbz i'll link up his web page and his youtube page man wasn't rolling again thought i was rolling I was just trying to go to a waypoint i marked saw saw a couple of them on the graph suspended Whew. gosh man I can't believe I wasn't rolling can't believe I wasn't rolling ah. just changed my battery too Look at that guy. think he's happy you want to go see your friends huh you got a couple friends with you. Not bad. <laughs> Not bad. Pretty good size small I actually just saw them suspended. I'm just going, here's the shore. Here's the slope. Here's the slope right here. I'm in the middle of the slope. And I was actually going to a waypoint over there. There's a hump I wanted to check out. And I saw these guys cruising. There's like three or four of them. But... God, it's a gorgeous bass. But, anyways, I'm just looking for those contour lines, man. Humps, contours, points. Fishing that. Bye, bud. You're awesome. Ah, got the other one I wasn't rolling. Ah. Little guy. Nope. Not bad. Show off. This guy isn't that big. Still a decent size. You ready? Not bad. I was sitting down. That was pretty funny. Not a bad smallmouth. Bye, bud. Another one under there too. A 
Oh, there's a couple of them. Little four inch sink. Uh. All day. These aren't that big. Hey, where are you going? It's vital. Tired yet, buddy? Oh, right into the net. Nice shot, bud. The biggest bass. Still pretty, though. Here we go. <laughs> Got you, buddy. Whoa. He wants to go deep. Oh, he's taking me deep. Wow. He's going deep. This guy's tough. It's tough. This guy's seriously wearing me out. Done? Are you done? He's done. He's done. Come here, bud. That was the hardest scrap of the year. Put it on the belly. Feeding for the fall. You're a scrapper.
That was the toughest fight of the year right there. <laughs> you got some brute to you, buddy. You're awesome. Thank you. So, I mean, my graph's not even on. I don't know if there are fish down there or not. I fished here today, earlier, and I, I fished this spot before, so I know, you know, it generally holds bass. But it's the same thing over and over again, BBZ. Here's, there's about 30 feet of water, and right here I'm sitting on that slope, that incline, and it comes up to about 10 feet right there, and it's got about 10 feet of grass. And uh, I'm just drop shotting. I got that robo worm, I'll leave a link. I'll leave Bill Siemensel's webpage and uh, YouTube page, you can check him out. Um, you know, if you don't have a, if you don't have a graph, I mean, I mean, a, a sonar saves a lot of guesswork. Um, but uh, you can still just pull up the buoys, go to where you can't see the bottom anymore, go about 15 feet further, and then cast out about 15 feet, and you should be sure to be at the bottom. You can also time out your drop, see how long it takes your weight to fall. Like if you find five feet watch it fall and if it's like a foot a second you can cast it out as soon as it hits the water you can count and then that'll tell you how deep you are and when you're reeling in you just feel for the bottom you can feel that uh you can feel that incline you know when you're uh when you're going uphill but anyways i'll leave links to everything i'm gonna keep fishing for another 15 minutes see if i can pull another one out of here Here we go. Gonna set that hook good. Coming, buddy. You done yet? You done? Yeah, baby. Not bad. Another one on that drop shot with the robo worm. Bye, bud. Thanks. God, that felt good. So, not a bad day. I think I caught double digit bass. A um, couple squeakers, but a couple good sized ones, and of course I wasn't rolling. Uh, that's you know how it goes with me these days, in my my life. But uh, you know, so all, all day I was pretty much preaching the BBZ, which is Big Bass Zone, and that's uh, sort of the philosophy and approach that Bill Siemental preaches um, of of how to locate bass and how to present your lures to them. Um, and although I caught mostly smallmouth. That all applies to largemouth as well. And a couple of those areas where I pulled up smallmouth in, in the past, I pulled up largemouth too. So I just didn't have any catch of largemouth today. Um, so, and the largemouth are just, God, they're just being buttheads. <laughs> it's just like, today I caught one and there was a school of them underneath the dock. It's, I don't know, uh, largemouth. But uh, uh, anyways, I, I hope you like it. Uh, I've got links to those. Those are robo worms. Those are six inch robo worms. Um, those are those are killer. I'll put a I'll put a link to those where you can find them and purchase them if you want. And uh, I'll put Bill Siemental's webpage and his uh, YouTube page down. You can check him out. Um, yeah, I mean it's. Uh, 
Oh, one thing about drop shot, just real quick, is uh, this year I've been drop shotting all year. Uh, I wasn't successful until I put more weight on my line. So I've been all year before, or prior, all year prior, I had been throwing drop shots with a quarter ounce weight. And I switched to a half ounce and uh, it was like first cast, boom. And it's been on ever since. So consider beefing up your weight. If you have to beef up, beef up your leader, go ahead. Anyways, I, I hope that helps. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something. And thanks for watching. If you want to hit that like button, may leave a comment or share it. That'd be that would mean the world to me. I really appreciate it. Thanks for watching, and I hope you catch a real big bass soon. Thanks.